Good morning, I'm Ellie Crissell and I'm delighted to be here in Manchester for the Rotary Young Citizen Awards 2017. This year is the 10th anniversary of the awards to celebrate the achievements of a very special group of young people. I presented the awards when they first began back in 2007. Since then, hundreds of young people have been recognised for the amazing work that they do. Each year, Rotary Clubs across Britain and Ireland nominate youngsters for the awards. The eventual winners for 2017 are with me on the stage. Let's hear more about them. Our first award goes to teenager Abby Booker. Abby is in care, but she works tirelessly and selflessly to ensure other children have the best experience that they can. She spends her time volunteering, helping out with a number of schemes, and tries to change the way adults deal with young people in care. She was nominated for the award by the Rotary Clubs of Doncaster and Doncaster St Ledger. This is her story. Hiya! Hi, please may I have two cup of tea next please? Yep, have you signed in yet? My name is Abby, I'm 15 and I'm from Doncaster. I've been in care for four years and I remember the first few years was a major struggle for me emotionally because I had so many different people and so many different things going on in my life and I knew what I wanted, I knew what I wanted to say, I knew that I had my own opinions on things but I was never really given that chance, I was just dismissed. And I think when I'd found the courage to sort of speak out myself, I just thought, right, that's it. I now know that I can say this, so I'm going to let other children have the opportunity. And I've just given them. We've got some sports going on. Yeah. I don't know if you want to... Abby is one in a million, to be honest with you. She gives her time um, freely. She's a great advocate for young people. She offers them support, she offers them advice. She's very much helped shape the service as well, the way the independent visitor scheme runs. For me, before I came into care, I didn't really have a childhood. I basically raised my two younger brothers. I sort of was given all the family's dilemmas and problems they were put on my shoulders. Care changed my life. I did things that a normal 13-year-old should do instead of staying at home and cooking meals. It was difficult, but at the same time easy, and it was just a massive relief. I don't think I will ever stop doing what I'm doing, never ever stop, so for me I'm going to take it further and make sure that every child in care has a voice and every child is loving being in care. Well Abby is here with me now, Abby congratulations, how do you feel? Thank you. Um, it's really, it's all a whirlwind really, I never really expected to win this award and I never really expected to sort of be here with these amazing people too. But like I've always said, this award is never really for me, it's on behalf of all the children that work alongside me, the people that work with me as well and all the different organisations that I sort of help along the way. Well you've done wonderful work, what was it about your experience in care that made you want to reach out to other young people? Well, I was never really listened to and I know how frustrating it is and annoying when you know you have something to say but you just can't say it because, you know, people sort of believe that you're not old enough or you don't know how to say it or you don't have the confidence. So for me, I thought I needed to stop and children needed to have that courage and confidence to sort of come forward themselves. So I sort of became the voice for young mm. people. Now, obviously, it must be quite challenging being in care. I'd imagine it's not the easiest situation for children. And you said that you want to make it a happy experience for children. How do you think you can achieve that practically? Um, I think by encouraging them to come alongside myself and the other children that I work with to, you know, to the, some of the presentations that we do, which show some of the fun and the work that we do. And just talking to kids and sort of explaining my story and how it's similar to sort of other kids and just getting them engaged and getting them involved in different activities and sort of showing them the, neg well, the positive side instead of the negative side of care. Indeed. Well, I'm sure you'll go on to do more great work. Thank Abby you. Booker, congratulations and thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.
Our next Young Citizen Award goes to 18-year-old Harry McCann from County Kildare. You could call Harry a bit of a whiz kid. He founded his first business at the tender age of 15 called Kid Tech. Over the space of 16 months, he taught more than 800 children how to compute a code. And in 2014, he founded the world's first digital youth council. He was nominated by the Rotary Club of NACE. Let's find out more. Hello. Hi, Harry. So what generally happens here on a Tuesday evening is around 20 or so local kids come in to learn how to code. So we introduce kids as young as seven to coding and get them involved in not just being users of technology, but also creators and builders of technology. My name is Harry McCann. I'm 18 years old. I'm a Leaving Cert student from Clane and Clare, and I'm the founder and director of the Digital Youth Council of Ireland. I'm a Coder Rojo mentor and an entrepreneur. I have a passion for technology and I enjoy sharing that with the kids. I just think it's a great opportunity to be able to show them that they can not just use technology, but they can also learn how to build things for it and control their technology as well. These kids are very much my generation, are just people who are on Facebook, on Twitter, who are just using YouTube, but they're not. They understand that somebody's built it and they understand that if they put a lot of work in and if they understand their technology, they too can build the next Facebook, the next Google, the next Twitter, the next billion dollar business online. I don't do it for the recognition. I've, I've never worked to kind of receive trophies or receive awards. It's always just been the added bonus, and I suppose it's great encouragement for me to be able to go on and do other things after. It's a good motivator. It's, it's just great to be able to get involved in something that you know, the kids enjoy, I enjoy doing, and you know, to be able to share passion for technology that I have with other people, um, especially when the kids get to go on and you know, have the opportunity to go and build bigger and greater things. Congratulations, Harry McCann. How do you feel? Yeah, I'm, I'm honoured to receive the award. Um, as I said in the VD, it's, I don't do it for the awards, I don't do it for the recognition. Um, it's, it's nice to get the awards and you know, it's, it's great to be on stage with so many amazing other young people. But um, yeah, it's great. It's good, for, as I said, to the kids as well. It's, it's great that I can show other kids who are younger than me and who I'm working with that you know, a lot of hard work and a lot of passion for something can lead to great things. And, this is one of them. Why coding? Why coding? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good question. Why coding? Um, I suppose it's just because I think it's the future. Um, everyone has a phone in their pocket, everyone has a laptop or an iPad or whatever it might be. And I think it's really important that we don't just become users of this technology, but also builders and creators of technology. I think it offers so many opportunities for young people. And I think they can have a really great future if they can understand not just how to use them, but how to build things for them as well. Any f future? Bill Gates amongst your, your lot. I bet they pick it up quickly though, right? Quicker than I would. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, like some kids come in and they can code websites and build apps, but they still can't tie their own shoelaces. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs to tie your own shoelaces? Yeah, <laughs> like you're coming in and you're going, they might be the next Bill Gates, and if they're the next Bill Gates in a year or two, they're still going to need their mums and dads to come along with them. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the future. It's the future, and you're part of it. Harry McCann, congratulations. Thank well you very done. much. Thank you. Our next winner is Mohammed Khalil. He was forced, he grew up in Syria, but was forced to flee the country with his family when he was 10, having been shot during an attack on his school. He watched his friends die, and he had to play dead to survive. Having moved to England, Mohammed started going to Leeds City Academy. He was nominated by the Rotary Club of Leeds. Ian Bucknell has been to meet him. Mohammed Khalil is a 16-year-old growing up in Leeds, getting ready for his GCSE in food technology. Nothing remarkable about that, but how he got here, well, that's another story. Mohammed was growing up in Syria when his school was attacked. He saw his friends being killed and was himself shot in the leg. To survive, he pretended to be dead until the attackers had gone. I cry when I sleep because I can't. I put like I can't remember my friends and my head is go. I can't go in my. It's not going for my head. Like I, I close the room. I sit in like I'm thinking I'm cry when I'm sitting because every time I think about the bad thing that happened to me. Mohammed's family fled Syria and eventually made a home in Leeds. His mum has had surgery for cancer and his dad injured his back at work. 
So Mohammed looks after them both and helps support the family with money that he makes from working in a restaurant. coming out. His teachers are astonished at the progress Mohammed has made. In school, as at home, he's made it his job to help others. His story is what pushes him and his story is what makes him want to change things. And seeing the war at such a young age, he speaks about helping people that have been through that, that, that aren't managing as well as him. And Mohammed plans to dedicate the rest of his life to helping other people. Sometimes I like feel like I want to win. I do money, a lot of money. I want to help like the charity. Like if I have money, I want to give the charity. Like because if you help people with each other, we feel like happy. Well, congratulations, Mohammed. How do you feel to be here? Happy. Yes. Now you went through some some terrible things in Syria. How do you think they? changed you as a person, made you Make who you are? more stronger and confident and to help other people who have a bad life before. And now, now you, work, you work a lot here yeah. to, 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 to look after your family. Yeah. You've, you've had some problems with, with things here as well. Yeah, when my mom got sick, he had an operation of cancer and I was very worried for her because it's, my mom is this, this all, the thing I have in my whole life. My mom and my family, this is the left. And when he gets sick, I was like very worried. I want to chop it for her to help her more because I'm the big. And I want to help her chop him, bring my brother from the school. And my dad as well is sick. He can work properly. And that's why he's... So a, a difficult time for you. And you, you work in a restaurant as well as keeping yeah, up with your I was work. Yeah, I was working in the restaurant to help more, to bring more money to give to my dad and my family to bring more stuff. So how, how does it feel now to be given this award and for everybody to be saying, well done, we recognise how, you. how hard you're working? I feel like very exciting because people read my story and I, I'm very happy about the award. I want to thank everyone is here. I want to say thank you and to everyone. Well, congratulations <laughs> to you. you congratulations thank and thank you, you for talking to us. <laughs> For the second year, we're presenting the Rotary Young Citizen Wheelchair Sport Award, sponsored by the British wheelchair sport charity Wheel Power. The award goes to 15-year-old Carrie Adenigan. Carrie, who was born with diplegic cerebral palsy, was inspired by the London 2012 Paralympics to take up wheelchair racing. Four short years later, she brought home three medals from Rio. She now juggles the life of a full-time athlete with studying for her GCSEs. Nick Clitheroe has been to meet her. Pushing hard in every training session to be the best. But fast times on the track aren't the only target for 16-year-old Carrie Denigan this year. Maths and French revision are just as important with her GCSEs around the corner. It makes for a busy schedule. I go to school for about 8 o'clock and then I've got lessons till 4, so it's quite a long day. And then I get about an hour at home and I'm straight onto the track and then I'm usually on the track for two hours. And then after my track session, I've got homework to do as well. So it's quite busy, but you know, I know that it will all be worth it in July. Carrie was born with cerebral palsy diplegia, which affects her legs and mobility. She only took up wheelchair racing after watching London 2012. Four years later, she was coming home from Rio with a silver and two bronze medals, to the delight of her fellow pupils at Bablake School in Coventry. I was so proud and I just, I almost cried. Well, I did cry. My whole family, we gathered in front of the TV about half an hour before the race and we were just waiting to see her. And then when we saw her, it was just absolutely fantastic. I was so happy for her. Their support will be important this year, and they're not the only ones. Carry sport doesn't come cheap. This new chair has cost her more than £4,000. The World Parathletics Championships in London are this year's big target. Expectations are high, but so is the level of competition Carrie faces. I really want to medal at London 2017. Now I've been working quite hard and I've been training hard and I just hope that I can get a podium finish, you know, despite GCSEs and despite what a busy year it is, you know. I just want to be there in front of the home crowd. But Carrie's determined that she will inspire the next generation as she was inspired by the London Paralympics.
Well, that was Carrie Adenigan, winner of the Rotary Young Citizen Wheelchair Sport Award. She can't be with us today. She's having a very well-earned day off at a family birthday party. So we wish her well and send on our congratulations. Our next... <laughs> Our next award goes to 14-year-old Aidan Jackson. Aidan has raised over £16,000 for charity in just over two years. He was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome in 2011, so sometimes struggles with everyday situations, making his fundraising efforts all the more laudable. Aidan was nominated by the Rotary Club of Widness. Andy Gill has the story. Yeah, I still don't like that picture. Aidan and his mum Caroline flicked through a scrapbook of his fundraising exploits at their home in Widnes. He started on a small scale, but the death in 2014 of his close friend Olivia Alice Walker, at the age of just 15, really lit his fundraising fuse. I wanted to help out her family as much as possible. And when they wanted to set up a charity, it was like the main, like they ignited the spark. Last August, Aidan filled a sports stadium with 10,500 teddies to raise money. Why is it so important to you that you do this, that you do help people? Even if it's just one person, that one person is going to make a big change to their life and it's going to help them out a lot. And all this despite the problems caused by his Asperger's. Day-to-day -day things were a struggle, um, and they still are, but when it comes to fundraising, it's just... A different person. As well as Asperger's, Aidan has a condition which causes him to walk on his toes. He may need surgery, which would keep him in plaster for six weeks and in splints for a year. I have to just try and deal with it at my own pace, just slow down a little bit. Aidan's raised more than £16,000 in just two years. You'll find out next week if he does need an operation or not. Congratulations, Aidan Jackson. How do you feel? It's just brilliant to receive this award. I mean, it's just showing that there's not always just bad stories in the newspapers and just the TV. It's showing that there's a lot of young people doing good things, showing that it's just brilliant what people can do when they put their minds to it. I couldn't agree more. It's lovely to have some good news about young people, isn't it? Yeah. Now, tell us about um, Asperger's. What difficulties have you had with that? Mainly social and just trying to get around, really. As, as a child, I struggled with making friends and trying to strike up conversations with people, but during my fundraising, it's been a lot easier to actually get to know people, giving me topics to talk about and just genuinely making new friends. So what, what drove you to, to fundraise? What made you think one day, you know what, I'm going to raise some money? mainly to keep the, um, my friend Olivia's memory alive and also to help out other people, making sure that what happened to her doesn't happen to anyone else. Indeed. Well, fantastic work, Aidan. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for talking to us. <laughs> Our next award winner is 18-year-old Molly Comish. She was determined to act after seeing so many homeless people living and sleeping on the streets of Ireland. She was nominated by the Rotary Club of Bray for her idea of giving packs of essential items to homeless people in her hometown. Let's see her in action. I was walking around Dublin in December of 2015 and I just saw the amount of homeless people and I decided that I needed to make a difference, so I'm trying anyway. I'm Molly Comish, I'm 18 years old, and I live in Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland. For me, dignity is being clean, so I thought maybe I could put a, together a pack of things that we take for granted to keep us clean that homeless people might not necessarily be able to buy. So I just decided to put it in a rucksack as well because it's reusable. And so there's everything from scarves, to gloves, to socks, to earbuds, to deodorant, to toothpaste, um, and bars. There's pretty much everything that we all take for granted, but need. Everyone's smiling and thanking me when they're getting receiving them. Hi guys, I'm just going to leave some stuff here for you. So that's 
just an amazing feeling in itself and people are just really happy to receive them which makes it ten times better. It just makes me really sad that people do have to live that way but uh, I'm trying my best to help them make it a little bit easier. Winning the award is amazing. I never in my wildest dreams thought that I would have won it. So to win it is incredible. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was over the moon. Congratulations, Molly. How do you feel? Um, I'm over the moon. I can't believe I've won it. Yeah, it's amazing. Now, it's, it's such a simple idea, but such a, such a lovely thought. What, what gave you the idea to come up with these dignity packs? Um, I just saw so many homeless people sleeping on the streets and I thought this isn't right so I decided I wanted to make a change and I decided to make 30 by myself so I didn't tell my mum or dad or no one and then they caught me bringing in 30 wet wipes and they were like what's going on <laughs> yeah. so I had to tell Stop them. Stop putting toothbrushes on the shopping <laughs> yeah, list. Yeah exactly. <laughs> so then I just had to tell them and then it's kind of just expanded and we made 120 this year. Wow and yeah. what, what's the reaction from people when you pass them over? Everyone's just so happy they want to hug you they want to say thank you you oh. and it's it's such a good feeling when you give them out yeah, yeah. And, and what next for you Are you looking to expand so it? we've got our stage one of charity status now so we're going on to stage two but we also want to expand nationwide and maybe to the UK as well which would be great yeah, so love, love to have yeah you. we would, would love to get in contact with charities and maybe other rotary groups as Bray Rotary is really supportive of this idea so we'd love to expand out now you you had some attention from uh, people like the Irish Health Minister. Yeah. Are you surprised by how much attention it's got? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like I just thought it was going to be a little thing that no one would really know about. So to be up here now in front of everybody is just incredible. Well, it started off as a small seed, yeah. and that's a victory. <laughs> exactly. Congratulations Thank to you. you so and good much. luck with your future endeavours. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Thank you so much. Our final award goes to sisters Amber and Sophia Coburn, aged 23 and 24. They founded the mental health charity Invictus Trust in 2011 after their 18-year-old brother killed himself in a psychiatric unit in Cornwall. They were nominated by the Rotary Club of Truro, as Noel Phillips reports. Our brother was a party animal, life and soul of the party. He was a fashion student, um, he was very popular. He was just like the greatest person. In 2010, Ben Calvin was just 18 when he took his own life in an adult psychiatric unit in Cornwall. Within the few hours of losing Ben, we were in disbelief. It shouldn't have happened. Ben shouldn't have been able to take his own life in a mental health hospital. His sisters, Sophia and Amber, wanted to keep Ben's legacy alive, so they set up their own charity, the Invictus Trust, as a way to support other teenagers with mental health problems. After Ben had passed away, really not very long after, um, my mum sat down with us, uh, my sisters and my dad, and just said that she felt really strongly that we had to change the services, really didn't want to be a family that became quite bitter because we felt like Ben had been let down and we needed to change what was available for teenagers in Cornwall and what support and services could be enhanced really and better provided. After three years of campaigning for a mental health unit for young people in Cornwall, it was recently announced that the NHS will be building the first ever specialist unit in the county. It feels amazing. Um, it's been seven years now that we've been running the charity, but some of, sometimes it's gone so fast, sometimes it's gone so slow. Um, we've been lobbying for a unit which has been a long, hard journey, and we finally got confirmation that the NHS will build a, a unit for young people in Cornwall. Congratulations, Sophia and Amber. How do you feel to be getting this award? Yeah, we're so thrilled. We're overwhelmed at receiving an award. Um, we didn't think that this would get recognised in this way, but we're just really proud of what Invictus has achieved, and we're a family-run charity, and we're just really proud. How do you feel, tell me, about how your brother was let down by the existing services in Cornwall at the time? I think as a family, um, you know, it was really devastating. We, ben was 18, but only just, and went into an adult unit. And we felt that the care just really didn't suit him. Um, it wasn't very hopeful. It didn't understand him as a young person. And 
we really felt that it did le let him down. But then increasingly through our work with Invictus, we realised had he been under 18, he wouldn't have even been seen in the county um, as we have no mental health beds for young people. Um, so that became kind of what we were lobbying for in Invictus, that actually there should be a young people's unit. Um, and just last week, we got the confirmation that the, the unit will be built after six years of campaigning. So, so this is a un unit which is uniquely sort of 18 to 25 year olds. It crosses that bridge. So currently, the um, it's five million pounds being put aside to start the build next year. Um, it's actually for under 18s because there's no under 18 provision in patient care in Cornwall. But as Invictus, what we're really lobbying for is to bridge that age gap and sort of go 13 to 25 because. Our view is that Ben certainly didn't just turn into an adult from going to bed at 17 and waking up at 18 no, the next indeed. day. Well, which of us do? Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. Do you think that your brother would be proud of the work that, that you girls have done in his memory? Yeah, we really hope so. Um, Invictus is, is completely in his memory. It's named after his tattoos and we use the Anchor logo so that it's a brand that young people actually want to identify with. And we really hope that he'd be proud of that. I'm sure he would. Um, and what's next for you? Um, it's very busy. <laughs> um, currently we go into a lot of schools, we do a lot of talks and really challenge and try and break down the stigma, make everybody aware that everyone has mental health. Um, it just depends where you are on the spectrum on that day and it, it changes. Um, so we do a lot of schools talks, obviously really, really campaigning to make sure that this build is innovative and that um, Cornish children are being cared for in Cornwall. Indeed, well they're in good hands. Amber and Sophia Coburn, congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, joining me now is the president of Rotary International in Great Britain and Ireland, Eve Conway, who started the Rotary I, Young I Citizens. I did it, indeed, Ellie, and you were there as well. I was, we were there 10 years ago. Can exactly. you believe how quickly it's gone? I can't believe gone? it. We still look as young, I hope, as we did then. Of course, we're younger, younger. And what about some of the stories you've, you've heard Absolutely here today? Absolutely inspirational. And that's why the awards were started 10 years ago, to showcase positive young role models like the people we have here today and overcome this negative stereotype because you know then as now the headlines are so often dominated by bad news about young people and we know that the majority of young people aren't like that and I think that, you know with Rotary uh, we have so many projects our Young Citizen Awards uh, with our inspirational amazing youngsters here today Young Chef Youth Speaks Youth Leadership Awards a young musician you know, because we know that young people are all our futures and we need to invest in them, really. We do. And so celebrate their achievements. And celebrate their achievements. We do. Eve, thank you very much. Eve Conway, President of Rotary in uh, Britain and Ireland, thank you for joining us. So, congratulations to all this year's winners who were nominated by Rotary Clubs across Britain and Ireland. I'm sure you'll agree, we've heard some incredible stories. We've been moved and I'm sure we've all been inspired. I know I have. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you very much for, very much for joining us this year. Bye-bye.